What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL. This is our season two toilet bowl, and it might not be as big as the Super Bowl. It's definitely not as big as the Puppy Bowl, but it is bigger than this bowl, and it's going to be a hell of a good time today. It is a best of five between my team, the Demon Detectives, and Spike's Bebop's crew to determine the true king of the losers, the teams that did not make the playoffs. The bracket comes down to this, a one best of five to determine who sits on top of the porcelain throne, to determine who conquered the porcelain tower. And we're going to get into it. Before we look at the matchup preview, though, one real quick shout out I just wanted to say to the YouTube members. Thank you so, so much to these nine people for supporting the channel with some of their hard earned money. You guys are seriously the true MVPs. So Turambar, Numero 80, Ram 9, Surf Taco, Sand Rooster, McCrane, Some Smarty, Chisei, and Machin X. You guys are seriously so amazing. This means the absolute world to me that you would donate some of your hard-earned money towards the channel. I really, 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 truly appreciate it. But without further ado, let's jump into this matchup preview for the Season 2 Toilet Bowl Championship. As I'm going to move my head off the screen. That was a smooth transition. Here we go. Bebop's crew on the left side. Spike is the coach. He is of the Guild Thunder Gods versus myself, also of the Guild Thunder Gods coach of Demon Detectives. And for those of you guys that don't know, Spike is the person that handles and uh, creates our spreadsheets for our drafts. He is a moderator and an administrator on Discord. He helps out with a ton of different stuff. He is also the Guild leader of Thunder Gods. So massive shout out to him before we even get into this preview here. But looking at some of the teams, there are some really interesting dynamics to go over here. First of all, just talking elementally, obviously Spike is known as a very strong Earth player, and I am known as a Lightning player. So in that regard, Oberon, Resnick the Hoppy, Luel, looking very, very scary for me for my Ibarra and Lightning. That is where Gargas comes in, as Gargas does have a really advantageous matchup into those three Earth units, especially with Resnick the Hoppy. Gargas does have guaranteed hits, so if Resnick tries to, you know, do some sort of evasion build, he can normally go pretty well into that. But then again, Celis hard counters Gargus, and Celis is hard countered by the lightning unit. So we have this kind of little musical chairs uh, thing going here, where not all of it is elemental counters, but there are like some weird counters to each other in those matchups. And I think that was one of the most interesting things about this series going into it. So a number of different comps that I felt like I could potentially run. I was saying, hey, especially if this goes to five games, like I'm going to try and run a different comp every single time just to try and keep things interesting. So that was kind of my thought process. Over the course of the different games, I was going to try and run as many different comps as possible. Spike told me that he was going to try and do a very similar thing. I think we have an entertaining series for you guys, and let's jump into it. All right, guys, for game number one here, we've got my team hovering the Garvel on the left side and Spike hovering the little Leela on the right side. That incredibly dangerous 40 cost unit. She's going up to 50 in season three. Let me tell you, the map is Mountain Road 2. For those of you that don't know, this is actually the map where I won my only top eight uh, championship in Orange Jay's Friday Night Fight. So it would be very fitting that this map would come down to this map. Can I get my second championship on the map? Or do all of a sudden my good memories go to bad memories? This is what we're going to find out. And the team that I brought out for game number one is a team I haven't brought out a single time. It is Garvel, Moraga, Fennis, and uh, Gar... Wait, I said Garvel and also Gargus. I'm going to mix those two names up. Guaranteed in this match, I can guarantee it. As the barrier comes out from Garvel on both sides. Both uh, Garvels going for barriers. I'm going to say this wrong a thousand times Gargis going to walk forward go runes of mind and destruction this is a little tech that i decided to bring out this is celis's tmr adding spirit to the party as well as giving silence nullify so that if little Leela walks up and does her aoe silence spell it basically negates that so that i can't get silenced by this dangerous little Leela unit she's going to go up and get her max hp up as well as a number of other buffs garble's going to walk forward pop a jamming thrust for 6k right into my moraga's face though right out of the gate not a fan of that zombie tmr on my garble though so now he's going to have to at least die twice and what is luel going to do she's going to walk forward by using pad foot sorrow tmr hate down and haste up spike out to an early advantage advantage here, but Gargus should hopefully find a nice little AoE. I'm hoping that he gets a really solid chunk out. Taunting Blade comes out. Just a little bit of chip onto the Garvel. Decent amount onto Luel, though. Windlash, 3120. That barrier working very, very well in Garvel's favor here. Silence, 
Silencing spell only going to hit the Miraga. So a positive for me is the tank is out front soaking up damage pretty well. But unfortunately for me, Garvel on spike side is going to hit a massive concentrated Chi Lancer limit break, dropping a spirit bomb on their heads. Miraga crucially has courage, so he's going to live one more hit. But my Garvel in the back did not like that. My tank is going to drop. It is in a 3v2 favor here for Spike. But my units are coming up next. What do we got? I'm going to drop the exact same limit break back onto Spike's head onto his little Lilo. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's not an AoE, it's just on the tank. Drops the spirit, but he, she soaks it pretty well. 3,500 damage. It's going to come down to Gargas. Can you get a big old AoE here? I need you to come through for me. Wittenlash on the whole team. Damage caps on the Luel. Almost kills little Leela. Garvel just barely hanging on. Twin she Rupture is going to take out my Garvel. So now is a 2v1. Psych. Zombie re-raises on my Garvel. He is up next. Can he find a detonation blast on both? No, he cannot. He actually just goes for the jamming thrust on Leela. Looking at the turn order, can the cast time get done in time for Gargus, or is Garvel going to get an opportunity? He also has magic reflex if Spike has it turned on. Well, what will we see? He takes out my Garvel, some Garvel on Garvel action. Arrow's going to come out for 8200 damage, though, and my Gargus is going to seal the game one victory for me. So... This is a best of five. Like I said, for the Toilet Bowl, all other series were best of three, and we decided whatever two teams made it to the finals could decide whether they wanted to do best of three or best of five. We chose best of five, so this is not game point. I have to win three games, not two. So I am out to a nice early 1-0 lead, which I'm very excited about at the moment, and I decide, you know what? My Gargus just did a ton of work this fight. I think he's going to be really terrified of it. I don't think he's going to bring Earth. So I'm going to say if there was a single time in this series where I could safely bring my Lightning FF13 out, it is probably game two. So that was my thought process going into it. And let's see what happened. All right, guys, game number two in this quest for the Porcelain Throne. And I brought out my little Leela the Bold Lightning and Severo comp. A comp that I've only brought one time throughout the entire season. I see Mish hovering in slot one, making me think, Wait a minute, there's 190 cost to play with, and that is a very large attack stat. Did Spike absolutely read me, like hard read me on this game too and bring his earth units because I said that he would be afraid to of Gargus? You're damn right he did. He brought his 140 Obron, he brought 120 Resnick the Hoppy, and that is a Mish. So now I'm at this point thinking, I do not have a ton of accuracy built on my Lightning. The only way I can win this fight is Little Leela the Bold hard carrying. So I decide to turn off Little Leela's slash attack piercing rate buff. I decide to just go Courage and try to go Saintly Wall on turn two because there's so much physical threat on the other side. We'll see if it works for me though. Resnick the Hoppy is going to go with her AoE buff that also gives herself some evasion up. Purple. Dragon's Providence from Oberon, AoE resist, critical evasion up, just a very generically strong tech. And this is Bulwark of the Bull. Mashri, Queen, Queen Mashri's TMR gives some missile resistance uh, for that lightning. So honestly, I do not expect to do a lot of damage with my lightning if I'm hitting these earth units. I do get the saintly wall tech from Little Leela, and I go zombie TMR from lightning. Basically just trying to buy as much time as possible for this little Leela to have her hit them and I thought instead of her heal back I thought a three hit barrier might actually be more advantageous we'll see if it's the right move though momentum's going to come out from Oberon this is the new King Bradley TMR and you already know the earth player in Spike has that guy built ready to go now, Little Leela the Bold is going to walk forward, and I see a little twitch animation coming out from Resnick the Hoppy. It looks like she is probably going to dodge this attack, and if I'm missing with Little Leela the Bold, I'm not liking my chances. I do one-shot the hard carry Mish, so that's looking good for me, but only out to a 3-2 lead here, and here come the Earth units for Spike. So, Oberon's going to go next. He's going to pop the limit break. Eight path Dragon Shine. Say good night, Severo. Thank God you got your courage online, buddy, because that's 11,000 damage in your face. He is still holding on but now i'm thinking can resnick reach Severo? yes she can so Severo, the 30 cost unit even though he didn't do any damage kind of doing his job soaking two hits with that bow tie on the right side to try and soak some of that hate target buff comes on for lightning makes me think she might not even be like it might even be possible to hit the other team delightful destruction comes out though hits both units drops both of their agility which actually does decrease how evasive they can be i am running that thornlet tech on Leela here. Oberon one shots just absolutely obliterates the lightning, but she has re raised. So, very similar to several lightning, really not doing any damage this fight, basically just soaking two hits and saying, Hey, little Leela, do your thing. 
please win the game for me. Delightful Destruction comes out again, procs the Courage on Resnick, and now I'm thinking, oh shit, 41 AP. What can she do to my little Leela? Thrice the Acrobat is a lot of damage. Can I hit her? Am I accurate enough? First Blood comes out, the counter hits, and I manage to hit Resnick the Hoppy, and I win game two with one health sitting on my little Leela Bold. If I missed that attack, I would have lost 100% because that counter brought me to Courage. So game two literally comes down to one hit point. And uh, my first overall pick of the season, Little Leo the Bold, hard carrying me on my game two. First of all, huge shout out to Spike in this game specifically. He called me, like he read me like a book. I really thought because my Gargus kind of popped off in game one that he would be intimidated by that and not run his earth units. I thought this was the one opportunity I'd have to run lightning. I was wrong. Spike read that 100%, brought his double earth, and thank God Little Leo the Bold is one of the most accurate units in the game because I wasn't even running her accurately and she was still able to hit Resnick the Hoppy. So it was very, very fortunate for me to win that game too. So now I'm thinking, okay, I have Spike on the ropes here. I need to get one win before he gets three in a row. What do I want to bring for game three? I said, I'm not going to overthink this. I'm going to go back to Gargus. My only fear that I have for Gargus is if he brings Celis which makes me want to bring lightning this game, but I'm saying, you know what? I need to see if he has an answer for Little Leo the Bold here. I'm just going to go with my classic El Clasico Titus tank, 50 cost with my Little Leo the Bold, and I'm going to run Gargus in slot three. It's a very, very generically strong team, and I'm just going to see if it works out for me. I expect Celis to come in game three, but what else is he going to bring? We're going to see if he actually ends up with that or if he reads me differently. Let's jump into it. All right, guys, game number three of this series, and I am currently one game away from being crowned the Toilet King, but Spike says not so fast. I'm going to try and make this difficult on you. He's bringing out Mish with a 3,400 magic stat, so I am anticipating that cell is coming out. My thought is the other unit has got to be Luel. I don't know who else this could be with that high of a magic stat, unless he went Adelard, but that would be insanely low cost for the team. It is Luel in the back. The level 121 Mish, I will comment on later here, but we'll see how this team works out. So the Runic Blade Plus comes out from Celis, so props the Protected Shell, as well as the Runic here. Literally the Bold, I did manage to turn on her training buff here. This gives the Slash Attack Resist Piercing to the whole team, as well as that heal back as well. Looking at a major magic stat from his team this time, I decided to turn off the Saintly Wall buff, obviously, as it wouldn't really do much for me. But here comes Mish with the uh, King Mont TMR, getting AoE resist on the entire party. This is so, so good for him. Immortal Spirit on Titus, rocking 11,000 health at the moment, and he's not even 140. He is very, very healthy boy. He is a very good boy. And Gargus is probably not going to be this game because he's probably going to be nullified by this Celis here. He is going to have to basically cast three different spells to even be useful in the slightest. But here comes a little Eel of the Bold trying to go for a flank Covert Ops mission angle on the side here, getting her courage and her self heal up. She is ready and locked in to go. Here's the Pissarro TMR on the well, so very similar tech to the game one. She is going to run it back the same way. Here comes Gargus with either a Windlash or an Air Aeroga, though, trying to get this first runic charge out of the way, and Taunting Blade comes out from Titus, so he is currently rocking a ton of hate, and they really don't have a way to dispel this on the other side, which is nice for me. So, Magic Burst comes out, 1300 damage onto the Gargus is not a ton, I'm pretty happy with that, and Titus gets Curses, comes in threes onto him, drops the unit attack resist, honestly, soaked that pretty well. He's not known as a magic tank, I did have a pretty magic resistant build going here, though, as the Limit Break's gonna come out from literally the Bold, I'm hoping to land a blind for some slash resistance debuff and I managed to catch it so Celis will have a lower slash tech resistance because of the blind hoping that increases both Leela and Titus's damage as speaking of the devil Titus magic reflexes the abyssal mire here from the Mish the 100 uh chance hit is not 100% chance if it gets reflexed. Another Taunting Blade comes out from Titus. A nice little bit of AoE chip again on the team. But what can Luel do here? Finding an AoE, Law of Geo Absorption. Titus didn't move out of the way of his carry Gargus. So Gargus eats that up like Reese's Puffs. And speaking of which, Stellis does the same thing to the Aeroga Disperser here. She soaks it, takes no damage because of that Runic. And oh my goodness, guys, that is a double dodge. 
you can't make this stuff up. Gargus and Titus dodged the Celis because of the blind. When I was watching this live, I forgot all about the blind. And I, for I was like, how did he dodge it? As Lilui LeBold takes a graceful undoing and kills the Mish here. It is now a 3v2 in my favor, but gift of knowledge. Luel says, hey, I'm going to teach you how to come back from a 2-0 deficit in a series. This is basically a double kill, but the courage does save Titus. Can Spike pull this back here? The auto attack coming out from Titus. He only has 11 AP, so he really can't do much. He's sitting there with one health. Celis, can you finally take him out? No, she can't. With the blind, Titus just dodgy enough still to avoid that Celis. Delightful destruction comes out, drops the defense, does get the magic counter under Leela though, and take note, Leela only has six AP. She is not going to be able to get in range. These dead bodies and Titus blocking the way, she's not gonna be able to get in range to Luel. So what can Luel do? Devitalizing Glint, healing power down, actually major, only 864 back on the heal. And because Titus is dead in her path, she cannot get in range. She has to buff instead of standard attack. She's got 42 AP at the moment, and Fettering Orb's gonna come out, proc the courage, and she gets the self heal back again because her buff was the self heal buff, but pretty paralyzer comes out and says, hey, you're paralyzed all the way through. Sit down, Luel. This is it, my series to win. And G, geez, I end up winning the Toilet Bowl final series three to zero. Honestly, all of the games were super, super close and entertaining, especially game two and game three literally came down to Leela Courage. Like I know technically she got this heal back on the last one, but basically game two and game three were one point, like one health point fights. That's how insanely close they were. So if there's such a thing as a close 3-0, this is it. Um, props to Spike. It was a hell of a series. It was a lot of fun, man. Thank you so much for, you know, being a part of this. I was happy to represent the Toilet Bowl with another Thunder God um, like you, Spike. So appreciate it for all of you doing the Discord and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I'm not going to lie. I was pretty excited about this. But while I share my thoughts, let's hop into the bracket and take a look at that while I go over some things just over the season and different things like that. All right, guys, so as you can see, the 3-0 victory, the W, Demon Detective sitting on top of the porcelain throne. And I'll be real with you guys, when we first decided to do this, you know, this was kind of uh, kind of a meme, the whole toilet bowl and stuff like that. And obviously it's not, it's not like the playoffs. Like, I'm super looking forward to the grand finals. I still have not watched it. I'm going to be recording it right after I finish recording this. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, it feels really good to end the season on a victory. It, uh, I don't know, it's just really nice. Uh, talking about me just for a little bit here um the season one of the wdl i had a really really great time but i did not win a whole lot i actually only won two weeks out of the nine i had two wins three mitigated losses and four full losses coming into this season the first four weeks i had two mitigated losses one full loss and one win so if you're doing the math here that is basically if you don't count whether it's mitigated or full loss my first 13 weeks of WDL play was three wins and 10 losses. That is just not great. And honestly, it was like, it was definitely frustrating for me as somebody who feels like they're a decent player and stuff like that. Um, but over time, I really do feel like I've learned some different things about this league. I feel like I've learned different things about how to use certain units together. I've gotten really out of my comfort zone using units of different elements and different niche units and stuff like that, which has been a lot of fun. And I was thinking back on it a little bit. Um, if you include this series with Spike, obviously part of this is skewed because it's the toilet bowl, but I have won my matchup seven out of the last eight weeks. And I'm really, really hoping um, that I can take some of this momentum into season three and, you know, end up doing better and stuff like this. Um, but worst case, you know, honestly, I just, I really enjoyed this whole season. I really enjoyed ending on a win, even if it's just the toilet bowl, it's not the playoffs, winning the whole thing. Um, I'm excited about it, and it does mean something to me, so I'm not going to lie. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. It was a lot of fun. Props to every single player who competed all season. We have one more video for you guys today, or not today, but coming up this week, and it should be the most hyped video of all season uh, with the Grand Finals, and I think it's going to be a hell of a good time. But I figured I would just, you know, kind of ramble a little bit here and share just kind of some of my thoughts about the season in general and stuff like that. I'm very excited for season three to start. As I'm filming this, this is Monday, May 22nd. 
Um, our season three draft is starting officially one week from now. So those of you guys that watch this and are not players in the league, you do not have to wait very long for season three to start. It's going to be probably just a couple of weeks before a season three draft video comes out. So it should be a heck of a lot of fun. But honestly, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I think it was a good time. I think the toilet bowl was a nice little thing for some different players to get some more fun out of their teams without having to make the playoffs. And yeah, it was a really good time and it was really fun. Hats off to Spike for being a competitor. And I'm glad I get to sit on top of the toilet. Yeah, I'm going to keep that. I'm not going to edit that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.